Evening, my little angel. The second question for this November is, what is sumo? Sumo is an ancient Japanese wrestling sport. In a sumo match, two rikishi, i.e. two wrestlers, participate. With one rikishi trying to force his opinion, the other rikishi out of the circle called doyo or to touch the ground with any part of the body except the soles of the feet. They often make their opinion's body touch the floor by throwing, solving, or pushing them down. Japan is the only country where sumo is practiced professionally and considered a national sport. Udo considered a modern Japanese martial art. Sumo wrestling has a history spanning many centuries. Many ancient Japanese traditions and ritual elements have been preserved in sumo, especially Shinto rituals, such as throwing salt into the wrestler's ring to purify them, clean the competition area and rinse your mouth with chikaramizu electric water before entering the competition, similar to the ritual before entering a Shinto shrine. Sinto is said to be the origin of sumo wrestling. Prehistoric murals show that sumo was originally an agricultural ritual dance performed to pray for a good harvest. Sumo's first recorded appearance comes from a Kokichi manuscript around 712 describing how the Japanese island's possessions was decided in a wrestling match between the gods Take Mikazuchi and Takemi Nakata. Takemi Kazuchi is the god of thunder and shamanship. Takemi Nakata is the god of water, wind, agriculture, and hunting. When the god of thunder, Takemi Kazuchi, sought to conquer the land of Izumo, the god of water and wind, Takemi Nakata, challenged him to a duel. During the melee, Takemi Kazuchi grabbed Takemi Nakata's arm and crossed it like a reed. Then Takemi Kazuchi raised Takemi Nakata's body and threw him to the ground, the way today's Rikishi could defeat their opponents in sumo. Takemi Kazuchi defeated Takemi Nakata, claiming Izumo. The first sumo matches took place in Japanese royal palaces that became a form of combat training between samurai fighters and finally became a popular folk sport. In the first period after feudalism in Japan ended, sumo was considered backward and shameful, but it returned and became a national symbol of Japan from the Meiji period onwards. Traditionally, sumo wrestlers are famous for their enormous size and body mass, often a winning factor in sumo metro arts. However, there is no rule that a rikishi must face another rikishi of the same weight. A sumo wrestler can sometimes face an opponent twice his weight. Winning at this point depends on a rikishi's personal technique. The average weight of first-class wrestlers continuously increased from 125 kilograms in 1969 to 166 kilograms recorded in January 2019. Therefore, it is not wrong to describe sumo wrestlers as people whose body are as big as the trunk of a giant tree. Women are not allowed to compete in professional sumo. They are also prohibited from entering the wrestling ring doyo, a tradition rooted in ancient Shinto and Buddhist beliefs. However, women's sumo also existed under a name of Onazumo in some regions of Japan before sumo was introduced into professional competition. The life of today's professional rikishi is very regulated with rules set forth by the Japan Sumo Association. Most sumo wrestlers must live in Kamino Sumo training camps, known in Japanese as Hayas, where all aspects of their daily lives, from meals to dress, and regulated by strict Kiara traditions. Some facts about sumo like that, hopefully it has brought a specific image to those who love this special martial art. 
Coincidentally, in today's two Toto Chan chapters, there was one in which Tomoe's kids practice sumo wrestling. Let us come through together. You are really a good girl, and his pride. You are really a good girl, you know. That's what the headmaster used to say every time he saw Toto Chan, and every time he said it, Toto Chan would smile, give a little skip, and say, "Yes, I am a good girl," and she believed it. Toto Chan was indeed a good girl in many ways. She was kind to everyone, particularly her physical handicapped friends. She could defend them, and if children from other schools said cruel things, she would fight the tormentors, even if it ended with her crying. She could do everything to care for any injured animals she found, but at the same time, her teachers were constantly astonished at the amount of trouble she always got into as she tried to satisfy her curiosity whenever she discovered anything unusual. She could do things like making her big toes stick out under each arm while marching to morning assembly. Once, when it was her turn to sweep the classroom, she opened a trap door her sharp eyes had noticed in the floor and put all the sweeping down the hall. It had originally been for inspecting the machinery, but it was a real train. But she couldn't get the trap door closed again and caused everyone a lot of trouble. And then there was a time when someone stole her helmet, was hung up on hooks, so she went and hung by one arm from the highest exercise bar. She hung there for ages, and when a teacher saw her and asked what she was doing, she shouted, "I'm a piece of meat today!" And just then, lost her hold and fell down so hard it knocked all the wind out of her lungs, and she couldn't speak all day. Then, of course, there was that time when she jumped into the cesspool. She was always doing things like that and hurting herself. But the headmaster never sent for mother and daddy. It was the same with the other children. Matters were always settled between the headmaster and the child concerned. As he had listened to Tuku Chan for four hours the day she first arrived at the school. He always listened to what a child had to say about an incident caused. He even listened to their excuses, and if the child had done something really bad, and eventually recognized it was wrong, the headmaster would say, "Now apologize." In Toto Chan's case, complaints and fears forced by the children's parents and other teachers undoubtedly reached the ears of the headmaster. That's why, whenever he had a chance, he could say to Toto Chan, "You're really a good girl, you know." A grown-up hearing him say it would have realized the significance of how he emphasized the word "really." What the headmaster must have wanted to make Toto Chan understand was something like this: Some people may think you are not a good girl in many respects, but your real character is not bad. It has a great deal that is good about it, and I am well aware of that. Alas, it was many, many years before Toto Chan realized what he really meant. Still, while she may not have grasped his true meaning at the time, the headmaster suddenly instilled deep in her a confidence in herself as a good girl. His words echoed in her heart, even when she was engaged in some escapade. And many times she said to herself, "Good heavens!" as she reflected to something she had done. The headmaster Kobayashi kept on repeating the entire time she was at Tomoe those critical words that probably determined the curse of her whole life. Toto Chan, you're really a good girl, you know. Toto Chan was very sad. She was in third grade now, and she liked Tai Chan a lot. He was clever and good at physics. He studied English, and it was he who taught her the English word for fox. Toto Chan, he had said, "Do you know what the English word for kissing is? It's fox, fox." 
Toto Chan had luxuriated the sound of that word all day long. After that, the first thing she always did when she got to classroom in the train was to sharpen all the pencils in Tai Chan's pencil box as beautifully as she could with her pen knife. She didn't bother about her own, which she just had chat with her teeth. In spite of all that, Tai Chan had spoken roughly to her. It happened during lunch break. Toto Chan was sauntering along behind the Ziegler Hall in the region of Chat Notorious Cesspool. Toto Chan! Tai Chan's voice sounded crossed and she stopped, startled. Posting for breath, Tai Chan said, When I grow up, I'm not going to marry you, no matter how much you ask me to. So saying, he walked off, his eyes on the ground. Tutu Chan stood dazed, watching until he and his last head disappeared from view. That head was full of brains that she admired so much. That head was look so much bigger than his body, the children used to call him the improper fraction. Tutu Chan put her hands in her pockets and thought. She could not remember doing anything to annoy him. In desperation, she talked it over with her classmate Miyo Chan. After listening to Toto Chan, Miyo Chan said, naturally, Why? Of course, it's because you threw Tai Chan out of the ring today at sumo wrestling. Unsurprisingly, he flew out the ring the way he did because his head was so heavy. But he's still bound to be mad at you. Toto Chan regretted it with all her heart. Yes, that was it. What on earth made her beat the boy she liked so much? She sharpened his pencils every day, but it was too late. She could never be his bride now. I'm going to go on sharpening his pencils all the same, Toto Chan decided. After all, I love him. The two chapters of Toto Chan were lovely and had emotions and feelings. All said, Toto Chan was such a good girl and knew what love is. Let God of my little loves, all of us are born into this world to be good children. And let us not lose it. Today's story time is over. I wish my angel a good night's sleep. Kiss you long on your forehead. See you again next time.